Hi, I'm Todd from Meyer Sound Laboratories, Product Management Division. Uh, this particular show, we're showing off our Galaxy units, the Galileo Galaxy, the latest and greatest for Meyer Sound digital products. And what I've done here is I have a setup of a Mac Mini that's giving us audio from iTunes, really simple setup, sending digital out into the Galileo Galaxy through AES converter to uh, uh, then network, we're doing network audio here, sending a CAT6 cable into the switch, from the switch to this 816, and then another switch uh, over across the way to another 816, uh, and we're doing that all on a single uh, CAT5, or I'm sorry, CAT6 uh, networks. Uh, I've got a Wi-Fi access point here to show off our latest uh, iPad app, Compass Go, and then we're all controlling this up here with Compass Go and our latest Compass uh, desktop software. So what I've done, this is my main 408. We have two units, a 408 and 816. This is the 408. It's basically taking the signal in and then sending network audio out to a stage left rack that's driving a leopard array. So eight channels here coming to eight channels here, and then these eight channels here are coming to this eight channels here. So uh, the reason why we call it a, a Galaxy 408 is that it's physically four analog connections and eight analog outputs. And then we've got uh, eight 16s, which are eight in and 16 out, analog AES. But the transport between units is all AVB. But the benefit of a 408 is that it's using the same digital package that's on the 816. So I actually have eight AVB inputs and 16 AVB outputs. So. I'm simply routing uh, from one processor to another, and the way that I do that is I'm basically choosing my input source, and once I've done that, stream management is automatic, I just need to choose the channel names. So from here I've got a list of 16 output channels from the main device, I'm looking at my delay device here, and I'm just basically routing my output to my input. So that's how we do that, simple connection. Stream management is all taken care of for me. I have a, a locking between units. I just choose my input to lock to. And we have a clock lock, and our sample rate is always 96K. And another, uh, another important feature for the, uh, the Galaxy is product integration. So uh, obviously, we're constantly evolving our products to uh, use more uh, more up-to-date uh, advanced technology in our electronics. So, uh, but one thing that we don't want to forget about is our our loyal customers that use some of the older products. So we've obviously in this particular setup we have all the new products, the 900 LFC and the Leopards, and then here we've got some older UPJs, and then we're using the newer 1100 LFCs, and then we've got a 700. But what you're seeing here is delay integration, and what we've done is enabled the, the newer products to work with the older products and by doing so the newer products phase characteristics can be matched to the older products phase characteristics so we have a method for you to decide on on what product you're using and you can assign the product to the output and then once you do that you have a choice of different phase characteristics so if the the phase characteristic has a, a phase wrap at 125 hertz you would choose that if it has a 100 that you like to use, but better. These are all different characteristics of the product, but the idea is that you can match all outputs to use the same phase characteristic. And we've done all the hard work for you at the factory. Uh, for processing, uh, we've basically taken the best of Callisto and applied it to the inputs and outputs. Obviously, we want to keep our complementary phase EQ in on board every unit, which has been uh, uh, a staple of Meyer Sound for many, 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 many years. Uh, U-shaping, that came along when the Callisto product happened. And this is our, uh, you know, our elegant shaping filter. We can sculpt any kind of curve we want to. Uh, we basically eliminated the uh, true shaping filter because this one was just a bit more useful. So uh, I'm making an extreme example here. But one of the things that true shaping could not allow you, obviously, is a slope change. So with that, uh, we can make some very interesting shapes so you can get the right amount of sculpting for the kind of sound that you want, for the type of music you're playing. So that's really, really important. We wanted to keep that feature for our users. 
but not only are we, is it on the outputs, but it's also on the inputs. So we have a U-shaping on the inputs now. In terms of uh, uh, channel settings, there's a little few different things here. On the inputs, 500 milliseconds on each input. Now, on the previous Galileo, we had two seconds on the inputs, and we have we still have two seconds on the outputs. But the main difference between units, between the old and the new, we now have cross point delay matrix. So you can actually set up to 500 milliseconds at each cross point. Future uh, versions of the product, we are working on a, uh, for the, the hardware, we're working on a Dante version. So we'll have Dante eight channel inputs uh, for the, both the 816 and the 408. So you can send Dante, and then of course AVB will be the transport between galaxies. Um, the other version we're going to have is an AES version, which will have word clock in, as well as uh, digital AES out and AVB. We're sending from the other AVB front of house to this unit through AVB, and we're also uh, presenting our MDM 5000 power distro unit, and you can learn more about these products at MeyerSound.com. <laughs>